you for coming out. You having a good time? Yeah. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm going to do an improv show here. I have no idea what I'm going to do at all. It's all going to be made up right here on the spot. Uh, I'm visiting from Philadelphia. Any Anybody visiting out of town? Yeah. Okay. Anybody from Baltimore? Yeah. Uh, anybody who, before tonight, before these past shows that you just saw, has never seen improv before? Anybody? You? I saw your hand first. Would you come join me on stage? <laughs> Sure. Another round of applause. <laughs> so hi again, I'm Matt, and your name? Netta. Netta, nice yeah. to meet you. Um, so Netta, what happens in this improv show? You've never seen improv before tonight. Um, did what, some friends bring you? Um, I actually decided to come because okay. I saw a group on for it. Okay, group <laughs> on! <laughs> You saw a group on, thought I'll come head out, and you're in the show now, uh, is how it works. So this is Matt and, uh, it's an improv show starring Matt and a random stranger pulled from the audience, and that would be you. Does that sound okay to you? Yeah. You're not gonna... Yeah. Thank you very much for joining me. What you should know, and might comfort you, is that you can do absolutely no wrong in this show. Everything that you say is perfect. You can even try to mess me up, if you like, okay. on purpose. Okay. Um, the, the job of making everything work is all on me, because it's my show. If not for me pulling you up here, you wouldn't be on stage. Okay. So you have absolutely no responsibilities. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so uh, other than Groupon, what kind of stuff are you into? What do you do? <laughs> I like running. I like going to the movies. Okay. I like reading. I like going to quirky coffee shops. Quirky coffee shops? Yes. They have to be quirky? They have to be quirky. Those are the kinds I enjoy. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for a living? I am a teacher, and I'm also attending school. Okay, great. Um, you, uh, you're from Baltimore? Or? No, I'm from California. California, okay. But yeah. you're just visiting? No, I am. I mean, you're originally from California, and now you're in Baltimore? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. California, born and bred, and now teaching the next generation of Baltimoreans. Sure, yes. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, so now that uh, we know you and you know me and we're about to do an improv show, um, what we're going to do is get a suggestion from the audience to sort of inspire us and inspire us. Um, so what we need from the audience <laughs> is uh, any word or phrase at all. I'm going to have you guys shout it out on the count of three. Ready? One. Two, three. Go you go what? Blue plate special. Blue plate special. Blue plate special. It is. It's a tongue twister. Uh, so Matt and Netta present a completely improvised. We have no idea what we're doing. Show called Blue Plate Special. Yeah. How many? Um, ten. Ten. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be like a forty-five minute wait. 45 minutes? At least. Are you it's, kidding me? Yeah. Can we make it 20? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a magic wand? <laughs> I thought you might. Uh, no, I don't. OK. A few servers didn't show up. So we're really just only seating people in these two chairs here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rest of the restaurant, we just can't staff, OK? so. Do you think that your party would be able to sit in just two chairs or like two at a time, five trips? I mean, that's fine. I can ditch him. I'll just sit. Okay, yeah. Table for one. Great. Uh, everybody else. Oh, God, I'm so tired. I have been on my feet for like 11 hours. Are you kidding me? You're no. the server. Yeah, I'm also the server and the host and the chef. And I'm cleaning up, busting tables. Nobody showed up. The owners went on vacation. So why don't you just close it down? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're closing. that. 
I'm savoring. <laughs> it's good. Yes. It's not great. Hmm. <laughs> okay, what you need to know, I served it on a blue plate that is smaller than an average plate to make me feel like I'm full. Oh, so it's all psychological. It is a very psychological meal. Got okay? it. And the milk is half empty. <laughs> because I'm a pessimist. Um. <laughs> and uh, I put the uh, silverware, the, the, the flatware, mm -hmm. on the left instead of the right. That made a difference for you. It made me feel like I was in an exotic, different situation where things were out of the norm. Huh. Okay. <laughs> and I sprinkled everything with garlic, even though it tastes weird and you wouldn't put garlic on everything that I'm eating because I wanted it to feel like a chef other than a chef that I would know. <laughs> <laughs> like a stranger. It's like if you are ever in a relationship and it's like, wear this blindfold. <laughs> I think I lost you. Okay. Basically, I'm trying to make this meal feel as though I'm in a foreign, negative, small, stranger place. Like an like a escapade. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call this meal. Stranger escapade. On blue plate. Well, obviously. Oh. <laughs> That's really just to keep my waistline down. Oh. I mean, no stranger. Strangers might serve you a blue plate, but I serve myself on a blue plate every day. That's not weird. Hmm. I thought it was part of the exoticism. No, that's just because I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I said it was good, but not great. And I want to make it great. Hmm. Because it's, this, this was exotic. It was like a foreign trip. It was like, where did this egg come from? But it was like a chicken butt. <laughs> you know, it wasn't so exotic. Hmm. So how do you think you can amp up that flavor? Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> I mean, I know that you're usually a life coach. <laughs> but I feel like this meal, you know, when I cook, that's part of my life. I'm doing everything else fine in my life. Requires a little more attention. Okay. <laughs> if I want to have a real emotional experience and get in depth when I'm eating, what more can I do? You need to feel it. Okay. Feel it. Now, I can't tell you what that's supposed to feel like. <laughs> you are definitely a life coach. <laughs> and, and definitely one of the greats. Thank you. I think that... I think that you've opened me up to make my own journey. So, I can't thank you enough. How much do I owe you? That would be a thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, this next exhibit here is a thousand to begin with, mm. but it can go up to at least two hundred and fifty thousand. Hmm depending on who is interested. <laughs> it's basically blood <laughs> on a canvas. <laughs> uh, and it, you know, re expresses some feeling. What kind of feeling? Because I'm not getting the interpretation. Pain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, yeah. Heart ache in that hearts provide blood to the body. Oh, very metaphorical. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this next one over here is um, sugar cubes that have been applied to a doily. <laughs> I like that one. I really think that it says something about our society. <clears throat> and... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's move on to the next. Yeah, you can't afford this. <laughs> this is the artist's severed head. Ah, pleasant. Yeah, you could put this in um, a library or a music room, <laughs> a child's bedroom if they're artistic. Um, it hasn't been treated, so you'll want to frame it in some acid-free paper. Hmm. <laughs> I'll take it. How much is that? One? It's thirteen billion dollars, <laughs> and most of that is you know, goes to a living trust in the artist's name. The children lost their father at a very young age <laughs> because he cut his head off and put it on. He right. does look young. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe the next. I don't think I can afford that. Okay. One last installation we have up here. It's actually sculptural. Mm. It's called Floor. Oh. <laughs> I see that. It's actually our floor, and it wasn't specially designed by the artists at all. It was basically just the idea of selling the floor. <laughs> so how does that work? Like, I get the whole floor? Or? Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so I own the floor? Yeah, you could actually have it, you could um, get it taken out professionally. Oh. At your expense. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you replace it with? Just out of curiosity. Um, another floor. <laughs> <laughs> hardwood floor, possibly concrete with hardwood floor on top. Would I have a say in that? If I built well, no. Uh, at that point, you would be, you know, you you take what you get. Hmm. I guess so I'm being this okay. So this <laughs> greedy. Um, yeah. I'll take the floor. Okay, that is actually um, eighty trillion dollars. <laughs> That's more expensive than the severed head. Yeah, because it's see with the severed head, it's the artist's body. Yeah. One and only. Mm. But with the floor, it's the artist's soul. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. The, the yeah. idea of generating ideas like that is the idea of presenting such an idea here within our gallery called Idea. <laughs> same, like, real, <laughs> down to earth, and honest. I might not have no gold medals or nothing, <laughs> but him and me know what it's like to be a man. Me and him, we're like men. <laughs> what does that mean? Like penis. Uh, <laughs> they're talking physiology here. Yeah, but like penis, the concept. <laughs> Ryan Ria Lochte and me, comparatively of you, is like both guy type guys. And you're like, I don't even know. <laughs> me with me, I like him like go to like the Kmart and beer. You know? You can go to the Kmart in beer. And it's like if I'm driving my car, Ryan Lochte, him be driving the car all so. <laughs> you wouldn't even know nothing about that. I'm sorry, about driving a car? Yeah. Yeah, I can drive just fine, thank you. You can drive, but me and the Ryan... Lock. Him and me are salt of the earths. Of the earths? <laughs> yeah. All of them. Because when we drive, we're like honest with ourselves. 
<laughs> I think you're a little delusional there. No, I think you're delusional. You would never even go hunting. You're absolutely <laughs> right, I wouldn't. And, yeah. and when I try to say that like, you can get a deal on that on eBay, if you say that there's a problem with it, you're all like, no, that's cheating. <laughs> I go to Denny's. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's it. That was the end. No. Oh. I thought there was more to this. What I'm saying is that you and me, I don't know if this relationship is going to work out. I mean, sure, you're court appointed. <laughs> When I'm at church, I don't want you breathing down my neck. Okay, personal space, I understand. And if I go to convict a crime, <laughs> I don't need you saying, no, uh No, 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 don't do that. You go back to jail. I know when I'm going back to jail. <laughs> On the calendar. <laughs> so what do you have to say for yourself? You're going back to jail. <laughs> um. I'm sorry that I sent you a fact. Yeah, not okay. It was in the heat of the moment. Um, and I just want to be best friends again. I mean, I could just as well have called you fat, too. How would you have liked that? I wouldn't, and I know that now. <laughs> because when I call you fat, it's like you saying that I am also fat. So almost we feel as, each other. Almost as fat as you, and I understand that. <laughs> that, is. that would be so mean. <laughs> I get that. I've searched my soul, and I know my feelings now. And I spoke out of turn, and it was the worst speech I've ever given. You know, and it's... I guess I can forgive you. I miss us. Yeah, I do too. I guess it'll be okay. But... But what? Just say anything, and I'll just, like, agree. <laughs> That's how much you mean to me. I need you to try to do the worm. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's real cruel, Stephanie. Because you know how much I've struggled with trying to do the worm. And you know how much that puts me on the spot? We're trying to do a dance routine. I need you to get it straight. Well, you couldn't do it either. I don't have to. You said you would do it. Well, I said I would, but then I searched my feelings. <laughs> and now I know that I can only barely do it. And when I did it in sixth grade, it was really just a convulsion. <laughs> but it looks so good on that video. Because doesn't everything look good on VHS? I miss us. But you said you'd do anything for me. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to look really terrible. <laughs> Like, not as terrible as your wedding dress. <laughs> Was that cruel of me again? Yeah, I think you need to think about what you said. When you put me in these positions, it makes me lash out. I know that now. They just said it. I don't even know how to begin with this. <laughs>
my suit. <laughs> this is about some stolen artwork. <laughs> Priceless artwork. Valued at well above any price, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> we think that you might have it in your position. I'm sorry, did I just say position? <laughs> we think that you might have it in your possession. Somewhere in your lake house, in your beach house, or your house that's down the shore. Are you a collector of art? I am indeed. What kind of positions? Possession? <laughs> <laughs> Artwork do you possess? <laughs> I'm sorry, did I just say possess? <laughs> the Pizza Hut Calzone? <laughs> I think I meant to say possess or own. <laughs> Damn, that pizzone is good. <laughs> Have you had one? <laughs> what were your thoughts on it? <laughs> Did you get the stromboli or the lots of pizza? The latter. I don't... I don't know which is the latter. <laughs> the lots of pizza. The, so the one you said later. <laughs> latter, actually, like former. I've heard of former and latter, but I, whenever it comes up, I get confused. I just yeah. nod. Uh. <laughs> Look, I've been real stressed with trying to find this priceless artwork. Could you just honestly just tell me if you have it? As a favor. Are you missing a severed head? Yes. <laughs> well. A piece of art in mention? <laughs> in question. The piece of art in question is entitled Giving Head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 